So we're with Kayla Harrison, no longer the most sought after free agent on the market. Now back in the PFL, the deal is done. We heard the news earlier this week. So Kayla, I got to ask first, I guess, what's the emotion like right now? I mean, I, I got to think there's some excitement, maybe a little bit of relief. Uh, what, what's the feel right now? Yeah, for sure. I'm definitely relieved that that whole process is over and I'm for sure excited to get back in the cage and do what I love. Um, you know, talking about fighting is cool and all, but I actually like to do it. So I'm looking forward to getting back in there. I dig it. Uh, it took a long time, right? I mean, it seemed to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, it, like you were almost getting annoyed by the end of this thing to, to get this thing over with and done. So I guess what, what, I guess walk us through the process. Why did it take so long? And was it tougher than maybe we thought it would be? It was tougher than I thought it would be just in the sense that I, I, I like tough, like that's such a, to, oh, poor me. Like people are fighting over paying me more money. Like, oh, my poor pitiful life, you know, like that's no, it's not really tough. Like it was just mentally draining in the sense that I thought I was going here. Then I thought I was going here. Then I thought I was going here. Like there was a lot of ups and downs to it and a lot of stuff that happened behind the scenes and behind closed doors that, um, you know, I, it, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about the business. I learned a lot about um, promotions and I learned about a lot about contracts and, um, but I'm definitely glad it's over for sure. It's. Whew. Yeah. It's a, it sounds nice on the outset, right? Like everybody's courting you and Whining wanting to go and in that direction. You and yeah, <laughs> no, for sure. I was like, Oh man, I'm about to live my best life. I'm going to be. <laughs> You know, going out here, going out there, going to these fights, going to that fight. And it was fun, like, like the first 30 days. And then I was like, okay, <laughs> let's wrap this up. That's awesome. So what, I guess what finally did it? I mean, you said all along, look, this is about money. I'm trying to secure my family. I've <laughs> got to make sure that my kids are taken care of. But, I mean, it, it, did it all come down to a dollar figure? Or what was the moment that you said, all right, we're sticking with the PFL? Initially, um, we had we had come to a good deal and and there were just some certain things that i was like i thought i was going to stay with the pfl and then the last minute um bellator came in with a really good offer an amazing offer um, i thought i was gonna get to fight cyborg right away and um so pfl and my last and my previous contract had a uh, right to match clause so they matched the they matched Bellator's offer, so I'm staying with the PFL. I'm happy to be staying with the PFL. Um, they stepped up in a big way, and you know they've also assured me and, and made it very clear to me that they want to put on big fights. So it was really win win for Kayla Harrison. You know, it was it was you know you talk about legacy and you talk about money and security and. I'm going to get both. I'm going to, I'm going to have the security of, of a great paycheck and, and a very um, lucrative deal. So my family and I can be set and, you know, I'm also going to continue to chase my legacy and the PFL is going to help me do that. That's fantastic. So uh, the one thing that really surprised me when I saw it was multi-year deal, right? Because you said, Hey, we may, maybe we'll do a year and see what's up, you know, cause the PFL mm -hmm. with it being a season, it's really unique, right? <laughs> you can just say, mm -hmm. so for the for multi year, I got to think that you put a lot of faith in them. I guess. I mean, what made you say, "Yep, we'll, we'll we'll not only do this for one, we'll do multiple years." Absolutely, and again, that goes back to the the right to match and and um, Bellator. It wasn't a super long deal, but it was certain fights over a period of time. So PFL matched that, and you know, we agreed like, okay, I'm going to do the season, and then we're going to put our focus on making these big fights happen. The big fights that will be on pay-per-view, no less. They reveal not only that they re-signed oh, you. Did they, yeah, did they say that? They, okay. Hey, hey, when you re-sign Kayla Harrison, you make news, right? You say, we're, <laughs> we're, we re-sign Kayla, and we're going to pay-per-view, too. We're going to pay-per-view. Yeah. Hey, they got to yeah. find some way to make that money back they're paying you. So what do you think about, <laughs> what do you think about pay-per-view, right? I mean, now you're going to be a pay-per-view star. You're going to have to go out there and, uh, I don't know, maybe sell some fights, right? What's what's your take on, uh, on going to pay-per-view? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, a, a – I mean, I, I don't know that I have an opinion on 
I'm excited for it. You know, I'm excited. I know, you know, for a fact that people talk, you know, the internet has a lot of noise and the internet has a lot of uh, things to say. And if you're not careful, you'll, you'll get sucked into all of that noise. But I know for a fact that my numbers do really well on ESPN. Um, all of my fights that I headlined, all of the shows I headlined did really well. The numbers were up for each of those events. And I'm excited. I'm excited to continue to build and, and grow. And, you know, I think that I'm just going to have to be so good that people can't ignore me. And, and I know that when we get a big name, if we get, you know, another star, people are going to watch. Like, it could be a, the biggest fight ever. People are going to yeah. want to watch. So I talked to Pete Murray earlier this week, uh, PFL CEO, obviously. And, you know, he wouldn't go so far as to say, like, hey, we're going to do cross promotion. But he did say, we're going to have some crossover bouts and we're going to be challenging these champions from other divisions and other. So, I mean, look, I, I don't know what Bellator thinks. Certainly, we'll see, I guess. But, I mean, do you, do you think the idea might be possible that maybe PFL and Bellator could come together and maybe you and Cyborg could fight and maybe everybody could share in the revenue a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, when I talked to Don and one of the things that really sort of put my, my worries about my legacy to rest was he was like, listen, I don't, I mean, he, he literally said, I don't care if we have to do this on the moon. I don't care if we have to cross, cross promote, co-promote. I don't care if, you know, like, he was just like, we're going to make this fight happen. This is the fight to make happen. And I was like, well, hell yeah, it is. Let's go, you know? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, for sure. I'm very excited about it. I think that the PFL is, is, um, doing all the right things. You know, I, I, they started a challenger series. They've got developmental contracts going out. So not only are they pushing the stars, like the top tier athlete, I guess you, you would say, um, but they're also starting to develop their, their own, generation of stars and the next generation of stars. So I, I'm really impressed with the PFL and all the work they're putting in behind the scenes that people maybe aren't realizing. And I'm excited to be a part of it again. And, you know, I don't, I mean, like everyone, you know, well, it's not the UFC or it's not this or it's not that. And it's like, I don't care if it, they're the best. I don't care where I fight them. I don't care. Yeah. I'll be honest. I, I think you and Cyborg right now is the biggest fight to be made in women's MMA. I mean, there's some great fights in the UFC. I'm not taking away from anybody over in the UFC. Some mm -hmm. phenomenal. I mean, the, the rematch with Amanda Nunes and Juliana Pena is a big fight, obviously, mm -hmm. because of what happened mm -hmm. the first time around. But I believe the biggest fight in women's MMA right now is you and Chris Cyborg. I think so, too. I mean, I, I think what's so crazy to me about, like, you look at, I get a little disappointed with the internet when I, when I hear a, a lot of the people um, disparaging my, my opponents or talking about women's MMA in such a negative light. When you look at where women's, like Rhonda basically put women's MMA on the map, okay? Not that long ago. Before that, there was very little women's MMA. Like there, of course, there were other pioneers or other women doing their thing, but not at a, at a, with a huge platform. And you look at how far it's already come. We're already like to the people who disrespect women and to the people who disrespect my opponents, like we've only been doing this for a short amount of time. You know, most of the women in the UFC and in Bellator all have similar records to the women that are in the PFL because it hasn't been around for that long. And right. Not only has it not been around for that long and it's a male dominant sport and we're all in there doing it, like doing our thing, but like most of these women are mothers or have job, like work other jobs or like they're like kicking ass at life and they have the balls to step in that cage. So for me, it's, it's so funny. Like, shut up. Just shut up. I'm so sick of these people. I really am. Just shut up. Like. These women that I fight with are are total badasses. I have nothing but respect for them. And they're showing the future female fighters that you can do anything you want. Don't take no for an answer. Have the biggest dreams you can possibly dream and go out there and chase them. And yeah, I believe that. And that's why I'm chasing this cyborg fight because I think it's the biggest fight. I think she's one of the biggest stars. I think she's a legend of the sport. 
And that's what I'm chasing. And, and fuck anyone who tries to get in my way. <laughs> I respect that. All right. Now, speaking of somebody you might want to uh, give a big uh, fuck you to, can we, do we talk about Henry Cejudo right now? Or do, or do this is your interview. Do we, do, we, do, we, <laughs> do, we talk, do we talk about Henry Cejudo training Cyborg and telling me earlier this week that, that no disrespect, I like Kayla, she's nice, but it's not the same level, and Cyborg would take her out in under three rounds? <sighs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's like he's – sometimes I think he drinks his own Kool-Aid or something. Like he drinks his – like he's like that – what was that coach in dodgeball? He's like, I, I drink my own urine because it's sterile and I like the taste. Like, <laughs> that was funny. Um, oh, man. No, obviously, like, Henry is entitled to his opinion. I think he's great. I think he's obviously one of the greatest combat sport athletes of all time. Um, I agree with him. I think there's levels to this. Uh, I think Cyborg is an amazing fighter. But, again, all of these women that she's fighting are similar to the women that I'm fighting. And, like, <laughs> we'll see. Like, I, we'll see. Let's find out. Let's get in a cage and find out. Do you think she can take me out in three? I think I can take her out in two. We'll see. I love it. I love it. That's great. Well, I hope this fight comes together. So let me ask you here. What's the plan? Is the, the plan the season would be at 155, but if we can get mm -hmm. the cyborg fight, we do that at 145? Is that kind of the thought process? I think so. Um, I think so, but I'm not sure. You know, I'm, you know I don't get to decide that. <laughs> okay. But you're open to – I guess what I wanted to ask is you're open to featherweight, but the season will be lightweight? Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely open to featherweight. You know, obviously the season is already – the contract just, just got signed like a day ago, two days ago. Um, all of the fighters are are lightweights, and some of them can't make 145. And also, I don't feel comfortable making 145 four times in five months. You know, like right. that's just insanity. Yeah. Do we – Do we, ha no, I know we know the season starts up in April. Do we know your first fight date yet, or is that still all being determined? I'm not entirely sure. I think the season starts. I think we might be in May. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure when in May. I'm not sure where, and I'm not sure who. But it's gonna be good. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because Kayla Harrison's gonna be there. That's what we <laughs> awesome. Well, Kayla, uh, uh, congratulations on the new contract. I guess last question I would have for you is: I mean, now that you're you're set, right? All the all the uncertainty that kind of hovered over last season that's all gone. Everything's done. So I guess. What's the what's the status now, the goal now? Where's the mindset now that all the uncertainty is out of the way? I mean, there's still – I still have a lot to prove. I still have a lot of work to do, you know. I made it very clear to, to all of the – to the whole world that I want to be the greatest of all time. I want to go down as the greatest of all time. I'm not there yet. The work's not done, so – you know, it's not something that's lightning. It's not something that's the snap of a finger or the flick of a switch. It's a bridge that's built brick by brick. And I'm going to keep building those bricks and laying them down. And, um, you know, just watch. Watch me. I love it. Well said, Kayla. Congratulations on the new deal. Appreciate the time as always. And we'll uh, tune in in April or May whenever it starts for the season. And maybe the pay-per-view with Cyborg later this year. Get ready.